something awful and scary happened to me, slash x slash, last year. I green texted this event earlier today on slash x slash in a skinwalker thread, but, I lost it, it is long, but real, and it still makes me feel a little queasy. What do you think? Live in rural North Envy. Them dars gold in them hills boys, no but really it sucks. Hanging with three brothers, drinking at the house. Call up some friends. It's desert party time. Drive into nowhere, on a dirt road. So we can shoot targets and shit and listen to obnoxiously loud music. 30 miles of driving completely stark, barren desert. The dirt road ends at no significant location. Wow that's weird. A bunch of other gays met us there. There are some hot ass girls too oh lord. We set up tables and chairs, get the bumpinest car stereo going. Everyone is drinking and firing rifle into the hills, shit is so cash. The girls hate the guns and are generally worthless. Some half dozen weed smoking members of our cohort nip off to smoke a blunt. Need to go to the top of tallest nearby hill to acquire best smoking spot. Get to the top. The hill overlooks a valley, and on the side opposite us. Holy shit. There is an older structure in the distance, maybe have a mile it looks like a farmhouse. It's splorin time son. Gather everyone. This is going to be so awesome. It is still early evening, still light out. As the entourage gets closer to the farmhouse it becomes clear that it is really, really, fucking spooky skeletons. The females are too scared to enter the unholy basilica because of the front door. Pick related. Jesus fucking Christ. It is a 1940s era two-story very fancy farmhouse. Everything is thrown all over the place. It is absolutely covered in rat shit and decades of undisturbed dust. However, what is disturbing is that everything is still there. Pillows, bland, books, furniture, pictures, paintings, even an old film reel projector and screen. These people were obviously very wealthy, but in 70 years, the property has been pillaged but none of this shit was stolen. Sold at auction? Destroyed. Retrieved by friends or relatives. The antique cars trusting into the ground out front with all their parts still on. Old school mint green refrigerator with door open, desiccated moldified ancient food remains. No, no, this is not right at all. How did this happen? Start to get creeped out. Wardrobes filled with WW2 era looking clothing. I do not know the significance of the farmhouse with the story. The thing is, I felt like the farmhouse was a very bad place for reasons I did not really understand. I mean, nothing bad happened at the farmhouse. It was just a little odd. But absurd shit went down that night and it started with the farmhouse. I went from drinking beers and having a good time, to freaking the fuck out. The sun was starting to go down so we needed to get back to party camp. Barbecue time, whippin' burgers, and steaks up on the grill. Oh my god that shit is delicious. My friend Dan has lived down the street from me our whole lives, essentially. We have known each other since elementary school. Dan is fat but funny so it is tolerable. He comes up to me and quietly says that he wants to go home. I try to get him to tell me what is up but he doesn't give me a straight answer. I am sure he was right spooked by the farmhouse like I was. Eating jello off a lowly stomach so don't really give a shit. Today was a good day after all. Brought lots of cut wood, bro number 2 and I get the bonfire going. The light of the bonfire illuminates someone fucking walking towards us in the desert. They aren't even walking along the direction of the road. Everyone essentially shits their pants, turning the music off and scrambling thinking it is an axe murderer or even worse, a cop. 
it is just this fucking dude in a hoodie. Walking in the middle of the pitch black desert. Somewhat drunk and confused, in light of the strange circumstances, we are relieved that it is just some relatively friendly guy about our age, maybe no older than 20. We tell him he scared the shit out of us and asked what he was doing out here. Hiking. Hiking. Do you know how creepy that is? Someone says, referencing the fact that he was walking around randomly in the deserted plains, in the dark, by himself. Yeah, he's the creepster. We made several jokes calling him the creepster, but he seemed like a quiet but good-natured fellow and laughed with us. We asked him to hang out with us and got him a beer, he had sort of strange mannerisms like a drug burnout and a scar on his mouth like a cleft lip scar or something. I'm so fucking stupid. The whole time, the hoodie guy is acting in a strange way, like he is waiting at the DMV or sitting in a dentist's office or something. I don't know how else to describe it. I remember thinking that he is probably just awkward. It starts to sink in for me maybe 20 minutes later that something incredibly wrong is going on. I start to feel panicked. I start to pack my shit anyway. It is past midnight and some people have already left. I tell bro number 2 that we are about to oust this joint and that we should smoke before we hit the road. I tell him to get Dan because he is always down to smoke. Dan is completely missing. Where the fuck is Dan? We ask everyone. We ask them when they last saw him, we walk around the area with flashlights, thinking he had to call his mom or he pissed his pants or he was taking a shit out in the desert. We blow up his phone with calls and text messages to no response. He was not. Bro number two and I drive around honking, with the brights on, trying to locate him. We have been looking for him for 45 minutes. Dan is gone. We hope, we pray, that Dan was serious about going home and got a ride with one of the gays who left earlier. Now we really need to leave, right now. We can drop by his house to see if he is there. For some reason, everyone assumes that we will take care of Hoodie Guy. They get in their cars and say goodbye. I am the driver and I would feel like an asshole leaving Hoodie Guy out in the fucking desert. How would he get home? How did he get out here? How did he get out here? I offer to give him a ride. I am actually sweating on the trip home. Bro number two in the passenger seat, asks him where he lives. He gives us verbal directions to a street, Calle de la Plata. My stomach drops instantly. That is the street where both Dan and I live, bro number two a short distance away. Holy fucking shit. We say nothing there is no oh wow we live there too or how long have you lived there. The rest of the ride is silence. We bring him to the major intersection, just a block away from where Dan lives. We drop him off there and he thanks us. We go to Dan's house. His mom, but no Dan, not wanting to worry her, we don't tell her or call the cops or anything. He must have gone off to party with some other troop. I call Dan in the morning. I think it was one of the most emotional conversations I have ever had in my life. I was literally in tears. I don't know why it wasn't sadness. Dan's story is as follows. He watched us leave the party camp last night. He said goodbye to us. He says that we left abruptly with the hoodie guy. Dan, where were you last night? You were gone for at least two hours. We spent almost one of those two hours looking in the desert for your ass. I was there the whole time. No you weren't no you fucking weren't did you go to take a shit for two hours somewhere? I was there the whole time. Completely without words, I spend a lot of time just sitting in a chair thinking over what happened. Then I get a call from bro number two, who has a much worse story. We go over to see Brent. Brent was one of the gays who was at the party camp. 
he brought the chicks. The chicks were over there too, when we went to see him. They say we never looked for Dan. They say that Dan was never missing, he was there the whole time, and we left before he did. They say that we arrived with the hoodie guy that he was with us in our car when we got there. I try to calm down and explain to them that is impossible. We arrived with Dan. Why did you call him the creepster, then? I ask her. I don't know, he was just really quiet and had that weird scar. No, you fucking saw him walk out of the desert. He walked out of the pitch black darkness. You were fucking there. Bro number two and I are yelling at the top of our lungs. They don't seem to understand what we are so upset about. They keep telling us to calm down. They do not remember how strange it was that he was in the middle of the desert. He came with you. Dan does not really ever hang out with us anymore. He was always a fun guy to be around. His mom says he is going through some personal struggles, but since March 2012 he does not really even talk to me or bro number two. Sometimes I wonder if my friends have some sort of amnesia or collective blocking. Sometimes I wonder what happened to Dan when he was gone for two hours. Sometimes I wonder if the hoodie guy was a fucking human being.